Some of us may know about the technological advancements of China starting from the 19th century. They are way ahead of most of the countries in many sectors regarding constructions. Some of their structures are so fascinating that sometimes it seems something out of the ordinary. This video is going to look at China's $20 billion bridge that crosses the sea. Let's get started! The murky waters of the Pearl River Delta extend as far as the eye can see as we drive down the strangely desolate Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. There isn't a single speck of land in sight. This is the world's longest sea crossing bridge, spanning 34 miles. Halfway through the journey, Gao Xing Ling, assistant director and senior engineer at the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge Authority, meets us. His construction crews harsh conditions while perched on perilous platforms laboring miles from shore and high above the lake are evident when we are buffeted by a fierce wind. China's master plan to establish its own greater Bay Area, which it believes would rival San Francisco, New York, and Tokyo in terms of technical innovation and economic success, includes the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. Officially, more regional integration will stimulate economic growth. The Greater Bay Area, home to 68 million people, spans 21,800 square miles in central southern China and includes Hong Kong, Macau, and nine other cities. According to the CBRE Hong Kong, Southern China and Taiwan's Marcus Chan, the region is already vibrant and economically productive. Quote, it occupies less than 1% of China's land area, has less than 5% of its population, but produces 12% of China's GDP, end quote. He argues that, quote, the Greater Bay Area already has the 11th largest economy globally, end quote. The Greater Bay Area concept was first proposed in 2009. Still, several impediments connecting cities have been impeded progress, adds Chan. There are three borders, three legal systems, and three currencies, Hong Kong, China, Macau, China, and Hong Kong, Macau. Residents also have three passports and speak two languages, which are Cantonese and Mandarin. According to Chan, quote, the Chinese government should remove or reduce these barriers and encourage inner city interaction, end quote, he says in this video. The bridge helps here. It will reduce travel time between the three cities from three hours to 30 minutes. As of now, the east and west coasts of the Pearl River Delta are very different economically. Hong Kong, Zhenzhen, and Dongguan are much better off than Zhuhai, Jiangmen, and Zhongshan. He claims the bridge will help export items manufactured on the west side to the east side's air and sea ports including Hong Kong's International Airport. The bridge will also promote tourism. Travelers from mainland China usually fly in for one or two days to see other sides of the Pearl River Delta. After the bridge opens, tourists from China and other nations can travel to Macau and the mainland in around 45 minutes. Macau's casinos are the main draw. It's the world's largest gambling metropolis and the only legal gaming city in Greater China, says Chan. With its tropical temperature and abundant foliage, Zhuhai is a family-friendly resort. On Hengxin, an offshore island, holiday resorts, theme parks, and golf courses are built. The bridge isn't the only cross-border project. Two major projects, the Guangzhou Zhenzhen Hong Kong Express Rail Link and the Liantang Hengyuan Wai Boundary Control Point are set to launch later this year. Chan sees the region as China's most attractive tourist hotspot, but not everyone agrees. Claudia Mo, an independent member who advocates greater democracy in Hong Kong, says the bridge is a waste of money. We already have air, sea, and land connections between the mainland and Hong Kong. Why do we require this additional project? Mo, like other detractors, believes that the bridge's construction was a political act. Beijing has increased its control of Hong Kong in the aftermath of Occupy Hong Kong. This pro-democracy movement shook the province in 2014. Opponents perceive the bridge as a tool for controlling and forcing assimilation. In a literal sense, you can't perceive the current transportation linkages. However, this bridge is quite visible. You can see it from the plane while flying into Hong Kong, and it's spectacular, explains Mo. It's almost like an umbilical cord that connects Hong Kong and China. You know you've been linked to the motherland when you see it. Mo argues that Hong Kong's roads will not handle the additional vehicular traffic that the bridge will bring. The territory does not require any other tourists. Hong Kong is bursting at the seams. We already have more visitors than the entire United Kingdom. In 2016, Hong Kong welcomed 56.7 million tourists compared to 37.6 million in the United Kingdom. In addition, Mo believes Hong Kong has overspent on the bridge. 
the three regional governments that participated in the project accepted financial responsibility for sections within their own territory and divided the expense of the central bridge that connects them, which is 14 miles long. According to information provided by the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge Authority, the main bridge's overall cost was $7.56 billion, with $4.32 billion in bank loans. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to stay tuned for more exciting videos. Hong Kong put up $1.38 billion of the remaining $3.24 billion, slightly less than Zhuhai, which is $1.43 billion, which received financial help from China's central government, but significantly more than Macau, which is $0.43 billion, the smallest of the three cities with a population of 610,000. According to a Transport and Housing Bureau spokesperson, Hong Kong spent an additional $4.57 billion on its boundary crossing facilities and $3.19 billion on a connecting road from the main bridge to the boundary crossing. The overall bill for Hong Kong is more than $9 billion. But, as Ma points out, quote, Hong Kong has had to fund a large chunk of the bridge, end quote. While the bridge's necessity is questionable, it is undeniably an engineering marvel. It's 400,000 tons of steel, 4.5 times the Golden Gate bridges, and built to withstand an earthquake of magnitude 8, a super typhoon, and collisions with super-sized cargo ships. Gao said the most technically tricky element was building a 4-mile-long underwater tunnel. A tunnel is required to avoid traffic jams in the Pearl River Delta. According to the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge Authority, over 4,000 vessels sail every day sail Hong Kong, Zhuhai, and Macau's waterways. Gao claims the tunnel comprises 33 components that are 590 feet long, 125 feet wide, and 37 feet high. Each piece is practically an aircraft carrier in size and weight. Towboats and floating pontoons transported the elements from Guishan Island in Zhuhai to the building site. So, we constructed a foundation trench in the seabed, built a rock bed, and then submerged it. The tunnel joins 2 million square foot man-made islands in a shallow sea. Xing Ling claims that creating islands from scratch was also tricky. The 120 gigantic hollow steel cylinders formed a structural frame every 165 feet in diameter and weighed 550 tons. Gao told CNN, steel buildings were built in Shanghai and brought to the site. The team used hydraulic hammers to drive the cylinders into the seafloor and then filled them with sand. It's no surprise Gao has had sleepless nights. The bridge has been criticized since its inception. Environmentalists like WWF and the Hong Kong Dolphin Conservation Society say its development has further endangered Hong Kong's endangered Chinese white dolphin population. The Hong Kong Highways Department said, quote, the infrastructure is carefully placed to avoid the Chinese white dolphins activity areas, end quote. The construction technologies used have also been chosen to minimize the impact on the marine environment. The project's record on worker safety has also been slammed. According to the Highways Department, seven workers perished on the Hong Kong Link Road and Boundary Crossing facility, and 275 were injured. Quote, the Highways Department has also required contractors to strictly apply the safety measures, end quote. With each setback, the formal opening date has been pushed back again, leaving some to wonder if the bridge will ever be built. Officials are finalizing preparations for customs arrangements and operations at checkpoint sites, determining responsibilities for emergency rescue missions and negotiating toll pricing. The bridge's speed restriction is 62 miles per hour, and cars will drive on the right in China, then left in Hong Kong and Macau to mirror local driving customs. This vacant ocean roadway will soon be crowded with vehicles, buses, trucks, and lorries bound for China, Hong Kong, and Macau. No one knows how much better connected China's Greater Bay Area will be or how much closer Hong Kong and Macau will be to China's mighty embrace. What are your thoughts on China's longest sea bridge? Let us know your thoughts in the comments area below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to stay tuned for more exciting videos. Thanks for watching.